Okay, so I would like to do 10.3 number 42. So in 10.3 number 42, they tell me that capital F of X is e to the minus X squared and little f of X is minus 2X e to the minus X squared. That's a calculus thing, actually. Like, they told you kind of, they sort of gave you a pointer. But this is actually a calculus thing here. There's a good, easy, predictable way to get from this to that. But I won't tell you what it is, because this is in calculus class. And g is x to the fourth. And little g is 4x cubed. Oh, that one's actually easy enough to see. That one's a calculus thing, too. What happened? Well, or x. This 4, mm -hmm. where did it end up over there? Uh, yeah, so they pulled the 4 down. Uh -huh. And then they had an x to the, which is 1 less than 4. Right. So a good conjecture would be that something like x to an n power goes to n x to the n minus 1. That is, in fact, how you differentiate. <coughs> cool. And then this is a thing here called the quotient rule. Right, which just tells you how to differentiate quotients. So what they want you to do is find a simplified formula for h and little h. Okay. So one of these should be really easy. Capital H should be, I hope, dead easy. How do you get a formula for F divided by G? Uh, well, you take F and H. Yeah, you <laughs> take F, which is E to the minus X squared, and you divide it by G, G which is X to the fourth. Awesome. Can you simplify that to 1 over X? Plus e to the x sure. You could simplify this to 1 over x to the fourth times e to the x squared. That is about the best you can do. <laughs> Frankly, I probably wouldn't bother. Too late. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Tricks me. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> how about little h of x? Well, negative. Okay, so take little f and shove it in for little f. So you got negative 2x e to the minus x squared. Yeah, and then multiply by big g. And multiply by big g, which is x to the fourth. Minus. And then subtract. e to the negative x squared. Big f, e to the negative x squared times. 4x cubed. 4x cubed. And all over. x to the fourth. Should you have uh, parentheses um, in there over this, at least the second half? Sure. Lots of parentheses. When in doubt, put in shitloads of parentheses. <laughs> Good idea. Okay, so now that we have our parentheses in there, now what do I need to start doing? Distribution. I uh, take the negative. Definitely don't distribute it. What? <laughs> There's um, nothing to distribute. Okay, then what about combine? Like, <coughs> There's no multiplication happening to something that's being added together. Uh, yeah. That's what distributing is. Oh, yeah. That's right? So all you have here is like, okay, I've got negative 2x times e to the minus x squared times x to the fourth. I'm going to kind of think of that as like a combined like term step, even though it's not addition, right? Yeah. So I'm just going to kind of group up the x's. So what's your total power of x there? Perfect. So you got negative 2, x to the fifth, e to the minus x squared. Guys about that? Yeah. Okay. Then we also have minus, minus um, well, like 4x to the third, e negative x squared. 4x to the third, e to the minus x squared. And then this is all over x to the Eight. Okay. Now. Well, now I don't know. Yeah, I got that two x. Negative 
factor out whatever's in common on the top. So what do you got in common on the top here? Negative 2x cubed. Not, and e to the negative 2x cubed. E to the negative x squared. And an e to the minus x squared. So you got a 2x to this 2x squared. So you're going to multiply that by x wait, wait, wait. squared. So what did I miss in this first term? You're, you're just missing x squared. I'm just missing x squared. And then in this other term? Uh, 2x. Oh, no, just two. 2. There's a 2. That's it. And I accounted for the x. And what should go in between these? Plus. 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 Oh, negative one. Yeah. That's a thing you could distribute. Right? Like, you could distribute this back in there. Right. But you're undoing. But that would be silly, because you just factored it out. Yeah. Right? And then on the bottom here, what do you got? X to the x to the 8. Uh, which maybe I should rethink as x squared. X squared. X well, four times two. Uh, I don't know. Eight x is seven. <laughs> what, what, is, what do you want us to think? X cubed. How about I got an x cubed on the top, right? Yeah. Which I would like to cancel out with some of this thing. X cubed plus. So this is supposed to be an x to the eighth, right? So x to the fifth, and then get rid of your x. To the fifth. Yeah. So I think of that as x cubed times x to the fifth. Yeah. And then we can take the x cubed. That's multiplication by 1, so I don't need to do that. And then, what else can you simplify a little bit? Um, well, now that the cube, you can move the yeah. negative x points. Yeah, I'm not really super committed to this, but that e to the minus x squared has a negative exponent, right? So if I was in an algebra book, I would definitely want you to move that down. So maybe the best we can do here is negative 2 times x squared plus 2 over x to the fifth e x to the squared. Over x to the fifth e to the x squared. And that's our little h of x. That's what little h was. Over here is what capital H is. Cool. Questions, things? Even though, <clears throat> wow. Because go back to where you have your x to the 8. You can't, like, you can't simplify anything with your x's there because of the top. But you can at the bottom portion. So that x squared plus 2 isn't affecting the rule on canceling out your... No, because it's being multiplied. Okay. So that's... Like, at this stage, you should be thinking like 2 plus 4 divided by 2. Right. You wouldn't slash the 2's, because that really should be 6 over 2. Whereas here, kind of thinking of this as 2 times 1 plus 2 over 2. And there it's appropriate to slash the two. You could, at this stage, say, well, I'm going to slash one of these twos and also one of those, and I'm going to be left with one plus two. But I'd really, if you rather didn't, I'd really rather if you didn't do that, because it's kind of prone to error. Yeah. So it would be better if you just fully factored it out before you start slashing things. I find that when students try to slash things out of some of the terms, they often miss one, or they'll like slash this two with that two and make a zero out of it instead of a one. So it is valid to take x cubed out of all of the x's in the first one? Yeah. Yeah, you could certainly say, okay, so I'm gonna, I've got an x cubed at least in both terms here. So you could drop an x cubed here, and an x cubed there, and drop one out of the bottom. But that, again, is a method that's pretty prone to error. Yeah. Cool? Yep. Yep.